Today we will be looking at the ASUS Prime B550 Plus motherboard on the AM4 platform. We will be taking an unboxing of this motherboard and we'll have a little overview of all the features and specifications. So I brought this motherboard on Amazon UK for about £75 and it supports Ryzen 5000 series out of the box as you can see just down here. Now I'm thinking of putting a new Ryzen build together, probably initially I'll use my Ryzen 5 3600 but I am thinking about getting the Ryzen 5 5600X, we'll see if that comes in a future video. So without further ado, let's unbox this motherboard. Now I will say this motherboard is actually a used motherboard so the condition isn't perfect but it certainly seems good enough and it was tested and working by Amazon so it should all be good. So obviously not everything is in perfect condition here. Uh, we have our IO shield here. So it doesn't, doesn't come with an integrated IO shield but that's kind of to be expected. We have okay, our AM4 bracket and mountains here. That's just for the bracket and mountains of the AM4. We have our two SATA cables here and then we have the motherboard itself yep. so start, starting off uh, we have some big heat sinks here on the VRMs which is very good to see we have our 8 pin uh, CPU connector here at the, at the top of the at the top of the motherboard we obviously have our AM4 socket, so this will fit anything up to the Ryzen 5950X in theory. Now I don't know whether you need a BIOS update or not, but we will look into that when I actually put the system together. So at the top here we have two uh, CPU fan headers, that's one CPU fan and the next one is CPU fan optional. So that means if you've got an AIO pump, you could use both headers there, but you could also use that as an additional fan header if you wanted to as well. We then have the 12 volt RGB connector, so that's also handy if you are running the sort of old system RGB. So we have four DIMM slots, they can take up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, so 32 gigabytes in each slot. We then have the 24 pin motherboard connector for your power. We then have a USB 3. Uh, probably Gen 2 I'd say um, connector here on the motherboard so you can connect, connect your USB 3 front panel. Now moving on to the sort of left side of the motherboard we have um, a we have two chassis fans basically although you could put an AIO pump in one of them but they're probably used for two chassis fans. Next to that we have a TPM module if you do have an external TPM but really no one's going to use that. Next to that we have our main M.2 socket, this is the primary socket and it can take PCI Gen 4 drives. So if you do have a PCI e Gen 4 drive, uh, NVMe drive then that will be perfect, you put it obviously here. The bottom one only has PCI Gen 3 so you won't, if you have a PCI Gen 4 drive that will obviously that will only run at PCI Gen 3 speeds, unfortunately. But yeah, two M.2 slots, which is really good on this motherboard, although an ATX board you probably want three, but uh, two's enough, I still think, even today. So under the main M.2 slot, the first one, we have where we're going to put our graphics card in our PCIe Time 16 slot. Uh, this is also Gen 4, so if you've got a card which requires Gen 4, like the, well it doesn't require, but but uses the bandwidth of Gen 4, like the 6500 XT for example, the or the 6400 XT, uh, this is going to be perfect for that. So if you do have more of those bad budget graphics cards, then you will need a something like a B550 board or on the Intel side, like a you know h610 or something like that or 660 b660 or what have you so under that under that main uh, graphics card slot we have a pcie times one port uh, as well as a second sort of graphics card 
port if you did want to run dual graphics cards but you're probably not going to do that nowadays uh, so this is the time 16 slots but that's only gen 3 and then you have two more pcie times one slots as you can see we have six sata ports at the side although if you take i think if you take the first two m.2 slots then i think the last two sata ports don't work but i'm not 100 percent sure on that so working our way down to the bottom here, we have our front panel connectors here. So all your power connector and what have you. We have another fan, uh, chassis uh, fan connector here. In total, how many fans do we have? One, two, uh, three, four, five, six. It looks like six in total fan connectors. So that's actually really good for an ATX board and quite a lot better than the sort of like the Intel side boards. That's one thing that Ryzen does do a lot better. We then have two USB 2 front header ports. So if you've got USB 2 on your front case, then you can use that. Or sort of like some AIO, some AIO pumps also use that as well. So you might want to uh, use that. Uh, obviously, our fan connector I've talked about. A couple of other sort of ports which don't really matter. You've then got your addressable RGB port, which is probably what a lot of people are going to use if they're using now sort of more modern ARGB uh, with their case fans that's probably what people are going to use you also have a second RGB uh, port there as well so if you've got more RGB that you need to use there's also a COM port there but again probably no one's going to use that and then the other two again the other two connectors there aren't really going to be useful either for most people so finally moving on to the IO panel now this is not an integrated IO uh, it does come with a separate IO shield, but it it is what it is. It's not too bad. It's perfectly fine. Uh, it comes with eight USB ports, which I think is really good. I'm really happy with that. Uh, two USB 2s, so not great, but okay. We've got four USB 3 Gen 1 ports. We have one USB 3 Gen 2 port and a USB C port as well. So that's really good if you've got like. Um, connectors that you need for USB-C, then you've got that, that connector there. And also quite a generous array of uh, audio ports here, sort of like a 7.1 surround sound you could have as well. And then just to finish off, we have our gigabyte ethernet port, and we have a display port and a HDMI port. So if you have video out, if you're using something like the 5600G or the 5700G, you've also got video outs for that as well. So. It could be a nice little board actually this for 5600G but probably I think most people are going to be using a discrete graphics card so there's not really much use of those ports I don't think but they're there if you need them. So I hope you like the overview of this motherboard. This is the ASUS Prime B550 Plus motherboard, ATX motherboard. Um, I think overall it does look a really nice board. I do like the sort of black and silver and yeah i really i really think this is going to be quite good now we've got a build coming up with this we're going to put my ryzen 5 3600 in like i said so if you do want to see the build video obviously please subscribe and you'll get that in your feed and please like this video if you did like this little overview of the board and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys